Hi, I'm Stuart Fieser with Alta 3 Research. Welcome to a short presentation on asterisk architecture and by example we'll show you how to place a call through the asterisk system. Specifically we will take a look at how to configure a SIP phone and bind it to a SIP channel as part of the asterisk channel module, the SIP channel module. We will configure the channel module to direct the call inward to the dial plan context, which will map the call actually to another context and then back out to a SIP channel onward uh, to the phone. So the basic concept regarding tracking a call through asterisk is to begin with a phone. The next step, a channel, which is really the only way in or out of asterisk is through some sort of channel using some industry standard protocol like SIP in this case. Uh, the next step, which is uh, mandatory by the way, is to direct the call to the dial plan. Notice the dial plan is right in the center. This is where the actual switching logic occurs, where the dial plan is going to direct the call back out to a SIP channel where the SIP channel, because of uh, earlier registration, is able to direct the call to the SIP phone. So we see these five steps involved here, where, by the way, I'm showing 3A and 3B. I don't think they deserve to be steps 3 and 4, for instance, uh, because this is happening inside the context. The main components that I think you should be aware of before we dig any deeper would be to recognize the phone, a channel, which is the software logic or the protocol conversion, in this case from SIP to an asterisk proprietary protocol. But no switching takes place, just protocol conversion, where the SIP traffic, now asterisk proprietary, sent to the dial plan, where the call routing decision must be made. If you have an IP background, you would say that your router would have a routing table. But in the world of telephone, they don't have routing tables. Telephone people have dial plans. So this is the routing table, if you will, for routing a call, which we are going to configure to send the call back out to the appropriate SIP channel. So this channel number four right here is actually referred to by two separate components. SIP, which is the arbitrary name that Asterisk chose to name this particular software module, and then a slash, and then the channel ID. I'm going to make it simple, and I'm going to call this channel ID 2002. And the channel ID for this number two up here, I'm going to make it 2001. Bear in mind that call flow does not have to be restricted to just SIP. There's a lot of other software modules that can be included or loaded to open up an IAX channel, for instance. This is where we would connect to another asterisk box using the inter asterisk exchange protocol. Maybe H323 or Media Gateway Control Protocol, the Cisco Celsius Call Control Protocol, or Unistim, uh, the Nortel guys, for instance, uh, would be examples of different modules that people have written and contributed to the asterisk project. On the outside, each one of these software modules is industry standard, and the name of the module tells all. But facing inward, it's asterisk proprietary. And we don't really study that because it's not really important unless, of course, it would be your intention to write a new module to take some sort of new protocol from the outside and map it into the dial plan where one of the motivations of this would be that you have some new protocol that you want to map into the dial plan because once you're in the dial plan you can go back out any one of these channels having asterisk do protocol modification for you and that in itself can be kind of convenient now we are going to restrict our discussion to these components which i think are the most important to understand asterisk architecture but it doesn't necessarily restrict to just routing a call, for instance, to 2002. Maybe the call goes from 2001 to voicemail, in which case we would go to an asterisk application. So the discussion of asterisk applications, which would be internal to the box, we'll leave that for another time. Another thing for another time would be the discussion of the media. So if we are going to play back 
pre-recorded wave files or GSM files or if we're going to do real-time conversion where by the way you notice some of these codecs like G729 here are not free other ones like the G711 and uh, GSM in, in some countries free to use those without having to pay royalties uh, for for the most part the G711 interface and speaks probably remain the most popular of the free codecs to come in or out of asterisk asterisk by default though its favorite codec is GSM if you load asterisk it will prefer to have all of its little files recorded in GSM able to get a phone call to flow through the asterisk system. I'll see you in the next video. Bye now.